for tuning in. This is Optobotomus coming with another video review. And today we're going to be taking a look at the new Fans Toys FT12 Grenadier, specifically version the FT12T version with the purple chest. They do have two versions coming out, one with a, a toy accurate purple chest, as well as a more cartoon accurate gray chest. This is the sample that they decided to send to me, but really the only thing that changes is the color here, uh, both in insect and robot mode. Price is exactly the same, so it's just a matter of personal preference which uh, style you like. But as you can see, this is Fans Toys representation of a masterpiece style Insecticon bombshell. And I am really quite impressed with this. Fans Toys always does a great job of impressing me, and uh, they really have uh, continued that tradition here with this figure. Now, this isn't the first the third-party uh, masterpiece Insecticon that we got. We'll take a look at the Bad Cube one here in a little bit. But for his uh, accessories, uh, you can see that he does come with a separate gun. It's actually not this piece right here. It's actually a little bit different than this, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, you can store this. It's a bit of a, a pain to actually try to do. You got two little tabs underneath here that uh, slots into so two little holes here in here you, you gotta wedge it up underneath there and then you got this thing sticking out of its back which is weird looking but it's kind of a pain in the butt to do because you have to push all this stuff together and it's it's easier to do it when it's or when you're actually transforming it in here and since i already have it here I'll, i just thought i'd show you that's where it goes now one thing that's kind of cool is that they do give you a whole bunch of extra parts here that allows you to take this figure and without changing the color give it more of a g1 toy sort of look by that i mean you can see that he's got the more cartoon accurate looking center chest piece here where it's just this really nice kind of metallic gold color you also do have this clear uh, amber color one that you can replace that with if you want that toy look and same thing here with the legs you get a whole bunch of different extra legs well a total of six of them but you can see like for example this is his back leg here this is a far more articulated and more updated look which I think looks good and then you have these which are more of a resemblance of how his legs look on, on his G1 toy, you know, with like the little gun things sticking out here, you had that. You had the little more stubby legs here. Uh, actually, I think this is this side. You had the little bit more of a stubby legs that would go here along the side as opposed to this nice long articulated one. And then this comes up here and you can see you got one articulation point right here but this is like I said a little bit more of that cart or that toy look and you just plug it on there I don't know exactly if I'm going to utilize these or leave these on I, I kind of like these ones just because it does give a little bit more of an updated sort of feel and improves the articulation in terms of bug mode but as you can see he is one of these rhinoceros beetles uh, and, and for the life of me I don't know why no companies are, are painting this piece there was a sticker on the G1 toy, it was a sticker that was yellow. Give that a yellow color, or I guess we could wait for repro labels. Um, now, one thing I will say is that this is a test sample, so that things such as tolerances, paint, are not 100% finalized on this. So if something looks like it's a little bit too tight or maybe a little bit too loose, that is uh, just on my copy, it should be fixed by the final version. For example, this is pretty loose. I mean, you can see just putting it up, it will slide down. Well, I mean, it actually stays up there kind of good, but I mean, if you pull it all the way up, it stays there, but you can see it does slide, it's a little bit loose, and then some of the joints are a little bit tight. But as I said, that will be all addressed and finalized in the final piece. Uh, but really nice looking uh, insect mode. I dig it, I love how he's got the uh, section right there that's perfectly uh, sculpted for a, a faction symbol of sorts. Like I said, he does have a lot of articulation here in insect mode with these more articulated legs. You can see it moves forward and back, it can rotate, it does have a hinge right here, has another hinge at the front. This section here can move forward and back, but you can hear the squeaking. Ah, but squeaking is kind of something that we're used to with fans toys. It can also articulate up and down right there. You come around here to the back. Again, that rotates on that nice squeaky joint. It can move forward and back. This can also kind of pivot like so if you want to, but you got that pivot right there. You got a joint right there. You got a joint right there. So a lot more articulation than if you use these, but you do have a much more uh, toy accurate aesthetic with it. Uh, I think I'm going to stick with these though. Like I said, it just gives it a little bit more of an updated sort of look. And I think it looks pretty cool. Now getting these out of the way and bringing in his uh, competition. Here is the uh, bad cube version. And honestly, I mean, they, they both look pretty cool. I really love the engineering in this guy. It's really quite impressive. This is is very simple and it, it works perfectly and all that detached uh, it works perfectly uh, and, and it's, it's literally just a matter of of 
personal preference which kind of design you like you can see that for the bad cube one they went with just this silver paint which does look really great that is a very clean silver paint they did go with the more uh, traditional chrome for this which I, I still think looks good it's not bad honestly though like I said it, it's just a matter of personal preference I love how they actually able, or were able to design this in a way that you can have this kind of toy look with the purple here and then that goes away and then you got the gray section I love how they were able to incorporate that but you can see with the legs he does have the more a G1 toy style legs now there is a big difference in terms of the weight this thing is massive there's a lot of die cast in this which is kind of a thing with the fans toys this does not feel cheap by any stretch of the imagination but it is more plastic and you do get a a huge weight difference here and you can feel it instantly when you're uh, kind of going like this with the figures but all in all i mean i think that they still look really good i i almost would say that if you took those extra legs and put them on on the fans toys version it would probably look almost exactly like this guy i mean you can see that it really doesn't change too much you got the same section right here very similar in terms of the the overall aesthetic i mean obviously it's going to be very similar because they're going for a, a similar look but honestly it, regardless of which one you go with with, I do not feel you're going to get a bad figure either way. Both are terrific pieces in their own right. But as I said, Grenadier here does have a little bit more simple of a transformation, but simple doesn't necessarily mean bad. So to transform them, we're going to come around here, kind of move these out of the way, get these kind of position. You just kind of wiggling everything. Take this, loosen this, wiggle this on the side like so, and then you just swivel these out. I'm going to rotate those around on both sides. Take this section, fold this forward. This is really stiff. Get that up just like that. Come around here to the back, and then this whole section here will rotate like so. And then you can fiddle with this and collapse this around. But coming around here back to the front so that you can see what's going on. Once you rotate that, then rotate that just like so. So again, you're going to rotate this piece. Kind of get this out of the way. Rotate this piece here onto the back. And come around here to the front. This section here rotates that way. You got the little foot section up like so. This little piece right here folds back up and in, kind of fills out the rest of that foot. Then this, you just angle this down, rotate this like so. Kind of, this, this is a little tricky. There you go. Just kind of put it along the back like that. There you go, like that. And then, ah, there we go. Get that like there basically you're creating like a kind of a heel back there for him so you got a little thing for him to kind of stand on which is good everybody likes being able to stand get these fold these uh these little pieces right here kind of get in the way a little bit so just angle these get these lifted up like so rotate that forward like so rotate that forward like so kind of get these again now out of the way come around here this piece it's, it's a little bit tough to grab sometimes but it, it, it helps if you kind of grab down here and lift it up and then come back here this section here folds back just like so rotate this around now this is you, you can do this one of two different ways you can put this up like so which then kind of gives him uh, the front of his bug mode here kind of visible from the front i guess it's not too bad or you can actually rotate this around well then you have to split this i'm sorry split that off to the side or you can put it down like so it's personal preference i think it looks a little bit better if you keep it tucked down like this but because this is a little bit loose it could uh, slide down and it does so on mine so once you have that like that lift this back up like so keep this in between and then you lift this up on the back side here so you bring this back up together like so and then collapse that and then you angle this up and that tabs in the back of his neck. And then when you get that lined up, you can then close his chest off just like so. Uh, but like I said, that could be a little bit slippity slidey. So you bring these down. These are, you're going to just position these however you kind of want. But you bring this around. And then you got on the underside here, there are little groove sections that this part right, let me see if I can get that part right there is going to slot into. So you just bring that in there, bring that down. There we go, get it past that arm and kind of just lift and slot down inside there. Let me see, come on, there we go. Where are you at? There, are you in there? And yeah, now you are. Just like that. And then these, like I said, you just basically are going to fold these up and around and that kind of popped out. 
it doesn't actually i mean it just tabs and sits there so it's not a full secure kind of connection but it still stays there pretty good so just angle this angle this we're gonna angle that bring that down angle that up like so kind of position there and then just squeeze these i guess i mean you can do it like that yeah let's let's go like that like i said just kind of fiddling with this and whatever kind of configuration you want and actually when you put this in there it kind of helps squeeze things together here so it kind of puts a little tension on that so it stays up a little bit better so then you just come around here angle these out angle these out actually you want to rotate these around and then get this all the way around where that little slot section is going to be towards the top so you get a little bit more shoulder articulation Rotate that around, there we go. As you can see, this yellow section here rotates around so you can get that lifted up here at this upper that shoulder joint. So position that, position that, kind of give him his little ankle tilt, angle that down. And there you have Grenadier in his robot mode. And as you can see, the transformation, like I said, very, very simple on this guy, but it still yields an absolutely incredible looking figure. This guy really is quite impressive. And one of the things that you're automatically gonna feel, even in its the insect mode, is the sheer weight of it. Uh, he's got some die cast down here in the legs. You got some down here in the foot. Uh, this feels like it's die cast. And then all this is all die cast. Uh, this is actually plastic, but everything on here is die cast, which you basically see in purple is all die cast. So very heavy figure. Again, you got that really nice Decepticon section right there where you can put a, a Reaper label sticker. The head sculpt on here is terrific, very spot on. The one thing that I, I would probably criticize him on is the backpack. Uh, that's a lot of kibble right just hanging off here. Now it's probably a little bit better if you do use those more G1 toy uh, limb parts. Uh, like I said, I don't know if I'm actually going to use them or not. It's something that I'm, I'm probably gonna have to think about, but honestly, Honestly, I, I might just because it may streamline this and make it look a, a, a little less uh, clustered here. That's one thing that I really think that the Bad Cube figure did a great job of. So bringing in him for a comparison, you can really see a huge difference in him. Uh, this one has a much more kind of blocky, bubbly, almost cartoonish kind of look to it. Whereas this has a little bit more of a streamlined look. Now, again, in this mode, I still think that they are great figures. And depending on which one aesthetically you like, I think you're going to be pleased. You know, again, you know, in terms of the aesthetic, it's really a personal preference, but you come around here to the back and you can see that I really do think that the Bad Cube one just did a much better job of kind of collapsing that whole back thing. It, it just looks a lot cleaner and has a better overall presence, I think. Both have terrific head sculpts. Now, the paint is really nice on all of them. Uh, the silver on this is just really gorgeous, very clean and even. Uh, this also has a very clean, even look to the paint, uh, but again, this is... Uh, a test sample as well as this so definitely bear that in mind when you're looking at both of these but all in all i think that it's ultimately going to come down to which aesthetic you like i don't think either is wrong it's just a matter of personal preference now for his articulation the head is on a, a it feels like it's a little bit of a ball joint it's a little bit limited but you can get it looking left right uh you can see it looks up uh, i'm having a hard time because of this it looks up about that far it's not a heck of a lot but great eyes on there as well i do like this i actually like how this is a little bit smaller now that's a little bit more accurate to how it looked uh, in the cartoon now you don't necessarily have to rotate these yellow sections to where that groove slot is up here but if you do you get a little bit more uh, range of motion here with the shoulders you can see it lifts up like that and then you got another section that lifts up like that. If you had it down like that, that's basically the range of motion that you would get if you didn't rotate uh, this yellow piece to have that slot right up there. But if you can get more articulation, why not, right? Uh, he does rotate at the upper part of the bicep. He's got two joints here at the elbow, so you can get a nice bicep flex with him. Uh, come around here to the wrist, they do rotate. Uh, they do open, but they, they get stiff. Uh, it's like they kind of clip into place. So they do open up, but then when you close them, you can hear they kind of clip. Uh, and it's almost like what what's happening is the fingers are catching onto the lower section of the thumb and then you're pushing it in. I can imagine that over time that would wear down and might not have as much of a forceful kind of push in order to get that actual fist 
but uh, that's the way that it is right now. Uh, he does rotate at the waist, uh, you can see, but again, you do have all this back kibble that you do need to kind of worry about when you're doing it because you can knock things loose. He does move forward and back on really nice solid uh, joints. They move in and out, rotates at the upper part of the bicep. He's got two joints here at the knee that you, you can get it bending pretty far. Most of it is for the art, uh, the transformation, so it's still a nice range of motion with it. Uh, he can move in and out at the ankle. He doesn't really move forward forward and back, but you can position the toe and then this kind of flexes around so you can kind of make it look like he's walking or something, but you just have the ankle tilt, but that's probably all people really care about. It's a third party figure and most people only care about ankle tilts for some reason. I don't know. It's the weirdest thing, but you do have his gun that has a little tab section. So you do have to open this up and then tab it on the inside there like so, close that around. And again, I like how they actually incorporated the gun into a separate section instead of just having this piece come off. It probably would have been a little bit better and probably would have cleaned that up a little bit more if they could have done that, but I still think that it's pretty cool as is. And you can see that the gun is actually designed a little bit different. This is a very a seamless round section, whereas this has that gash kind of going through the middle. So it gives it a little bit different of a look, but all in all, I still think a real cool display option for them. Now to transform them back, you're gonna get this out of the way just like so, close that off. You can rotate this around like so. It's a little bit fiddly to do. There we go, you kind of have to rotate it around and then put your thumb there to stop it from rotating. So do that there as well, kind of rotate that around. It makes it a little bit easier if you don't do it, I, I suppose. There we go, just kind of line that up. And then we're going to get these, extend these up. We're just gonna get these kind of out of the way for right now just to, make things a little bit easier on us. Lift this, kind of angle this down, and then this section right here is going to pull back, and then if you get that position properly, just like that, and then you slide it out. That's, now let's, I'm gonna just do it like this from the front. This section gets a little bit stiff. Let's see if I can push that back from there. There we go, just kind of wiggle that there and get that to pop back. Then slide this down just like so. This section here, you're going to rotate around like that. Bring this up, that'll clip into place right there. And kind of angle the head back, bring these sections together, and then push this back up, locking that into place. And then you can you can straighten this out, but we'll fiddle with all that here in a little bit. The arms then, you like I said, you wanna make sure that you get that little groove section so that you can rotate these arms back, keep the uh, underside of the forearm on the inside here because you're going to have those tabs that line up. Do that there as well. And then just bring the two halves together, squeeze them, kind of make sure that they're straight. They're going to obviously angle, keep the fists closed all the way. So try to keep it positioned where it's equal on both sides. So you get it kind of fiddling with it a little bit, but you get it looking like so. Come around here to the legs then. Then you're just going to rotate that out like that. Come around here, you're going to rotate that out like so. So again, you got, well, I can show you on the other one. So you rotate that out, bring that out like so. This section here is gonna come down and then you swivel this around like so. Again, kind of get these off to the side and out of the way, just like that. Let's see here, where's that at? Angle here, and then angle this whole section, and you gotta make sure that you get the knee bent properly to get it completely collapsed in. And then you got a slot in the inside of his torso that this little bit on the bottom of his foot is going to tab into. So just line that up just like that. Uh, then take this section, collapse this up like so, come around here, do that on this side. So again, you're, when it's straight like this, you're going to rotate the foot out just like so, come around here to the back, then take that same foot and then rotate that back around. So basically you're going to uh, just return the foot back to its original position, but it helps to swivel this piece out. Rotate this around, make sure that you get it bent properly at the knee so that it's collapsed all the way in, just like so. Get this up and out of the way. Make sure that's collapsed all the way and rotate that out. Make sure that that section's there, there we go. Then squeeze all this together, locking that in, bring this section in right there. Again, make sure you squeeze all of this, angle these legs 
back like so. Do that here as well. It's probably a little bit easier again transforming them again if you have those more G1 legs. So, uh, like I said, I might actually put those on uh, just for less kibble uh, effect. Rotate this out. This is actually a little bit. It, I don't know. It's 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 kind of a weird thing. You got little tab holes right on the inside here that this section right here is going to fold in and grab onto. Uh, you got to push fairly hard to get it to lock in. And it's, it's a little bit uh, fragile of a connection. So rotating this around, you can see it pops out. So you do have to make sure you push really hard to get that in there as securely as possible. And then you gotta basically not touch this. So be careful when you're doing that because that is a, a piece that pops out uh, uh, occasionally. Angle this in, let's get that up there. There we go, right there. Get that a nice little push, locks into place. Rotate this out like that. I'm trying to hold that in while I'm doing everything else. Then rotate this around, rotate that around, and then straighten this and angle that out just like so. And there you have Grenadier, or however you say his name, back in his insect mode. But as I said, ultimately it's gonna depend on what your personal taste is. Be it fans toys or bad cube, I don't think either figure is like I said, wrong. It's just what you personally like. Ultimately, I like having both of these guys. Now, the Insecticons were known for having clones, and I like a couple different masterpiece scale ones. That way, you can kind of have that clone army of sorts. And that, that different aesthetic kind of gives them a, a, a unique look, so they're not 100% clones. I would almost say if you could afford both, get both of them, because they will look good together. Fans Toys really did a great job with this figure in terms of capturing that uh, updated look that a lot of the masterpiece figures do go for, and the overall feel is definitely there as well with that. I really love the fact that they give you different options so you can swap out the legs, you can swap out the chest piece. Uh, I do wish there was a way that they could have done something differently, kind of like what Bad Cube did with uh, changing uh, the chest color, but at least they are painting an option for you to get if you do want that gray version, which has that more cartoon accurate look. The transformation is pretty simple, but as you can see, really fun and yields great modes either way. And then when you get to the robot mode, everything comes together very nicely and the guy looks terrific. My one uh, complaint about that would probably be the kibble on his back. But as I said, I think replacing these uh, more articulated legs with those smaller uh, G1 style legs probably would go a long way for cleaning up that look. So again, that's an option that I really love that they actually included for us. All in all, this is another great figure by Fans Toys, so fans of the company can rest assured that th their reputation is still nicely intact. So if this is a figure that you're interested in picking up, he will be available at Big Bad Toy Store. So all you have to do is click on the link down in the video description. You'll go to BBTS where you can pick this guy up and add him to your collection today. But beyond that, guys, that's about it. So once again, I want to thank you for tuning in. This has been Optobotomous, and until next time, I'll talk to you later.